Welcome back to Who Chose. Now, today I'm going to answer the question that nobody ever asked. What happens when you cross these self-watering dog bowl grow systems with this auto-watering rain gutter grow system? Well, this is what you get. Now, I know there's a lot going on here, uh, but just ignore my failed attempt at soil gardening. And this passion fruit here is being grown hydroponically with a pet water autofill bowl, which is actually refilling from that reservoir behind me. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to grow passion fruit um, from a small plant to this size with this system. But we're also going to do a time lapse grow of pickling cucumbers in a grow tent. Let's get to it. This pet water bowl is again from Kmart and the design of this pet water bowl is much like the uh, rain gutter grow system. It has a float valve within the pet water bowl that actually allows you to connect up 13 millimeter hosing to a float switch, uh, which then automatically tops up the reservoir. The reservoir is actually a pet bowl. And within that pet bowl, it has a little slit at the bottom, which allows the float switch to refill the bowl without the animals being able to tamper with the switch, which is good because it will block a lot of roots getting into that float switch. Now, to adapt this to use for plants, all you have to do is stick a pot over the top, and this is a 300 millimeter pot. This is a large pot, uh, and it sits snugly. Like, uh, once this has weight in it, it's not going anywhere. So instead of fitting the pot within the reservoir, uh, because what I found is that if you stick the whole bottom of the pot into the res, uh, that part of the pot becomes a dead area, an oxygen-free zone, and that's the last thing you want. So what we're going to do is, where the pot sits in the reservoir, we're going to drill two holes and put in two net cups. And that's going to allow us to wick up without having the whole bottom of the pot as a dead area. Also, it's going to allow these holes to act as uh, air holes so that we have some nice flow of air throughout the pot. So I'm now just going to drill two holes for two net cups at the rear of the pot. Uh, that will be closest to where the float valve is. And I'm going to do the same for the other pot. Now with the kit comes this hose. Now this would usually be fine for water, but we're using hydroponic nutrients, so we're going to have to swap it out for garden hose. Now this is PVC, and I'm only using it because it's light proof. Uh, this is going to stop any algal growth within the hose itself on its way to the reservoirs. Now I'm gonna connect these up with some poly pipe fittings, which I'm just going to push into place. And I'm gonna drill a hole in this bucket and this bucket is gonna become my res and I'm gonna have a lid on it. So this will be up above these two systems and it'll all be running from the one res. Now we're going to put them in place in the grow tent. I can connect them up properly. We can fill our pots with media and add in the plants. So this grow was made possible by Viper Spectra who sent me the XS1500 to do some grows with. Thank you Viper Spectra. So this is just the 60-40 cocoa perlite mix um, with clay balls on top to stop the light turning the top to algae. I pre-soaked these with hydroponic nutrient just with a watering can. So I'm just gonna be planting some cucumber out of my cheap and easy hydroponic seed starting technique. We'll straight up like that with the cotyledon leaves. We'll turn this light right down and then we'll just make a spot in the cocoa, feed down the roots.
There you have it. Fantastic. It works great. Look at that vine. Now, I want to explain to you how I've uh, tended to this vine throughout its growth. Uh, I've been using these. These are just, uh, well, they call them tomato clips, um, but they work for anything. I tied up some jute twine. They just clip around the jute twine, around the stem of the plant, and give it a little bit of extra support uh, throughout its growth. Now, its tendrils will do that support for you, so you don't particularly need to do that once the plant is climbing itself, but it does uh, give a little bit extra support to that plant as it needs it. The other thing I've been doing is I've been removing the lateral growth uh, from the vines. So any growth that's coming off the nodes that's not the main stem, I've been removing, and that just gives you a nice, clean, straight vine. And this is how the major growers tend their cucumber plants and it allows you to actually move along the plant as it grows and maintain um, a plant that can then be laid along and uh, as it grows you will also remove the bottom leaves and have just a stem that you can work with in bunches. So I'm going to try and give you a quick look in the res. So as you can see the roots have made their way into the res However, they're not impeding the float valve yet. And it's just a matter of putting a knife across here and cutting the roots out and pulling them out if they become a problem. Uh, this might be something you may need to watch uh, with more vigorous plants like this, well, any cucurbit really. Most plants probably won't have this vigorous of a root system. But you can see these are really healthy roots. Let's lift up this vine and have a look at the bottom. And look at that. Really nice. So now we can have a look at the passion fruit that I set up in a similar way to this system, except outside. So the passion fruit I actually already had in the rain gutter grow system. And its method of growing was exactly the same. It's just in a line rather than in a bowl. Uh, so it's basically been raised in this method the whole time. I then just set it up against uh, my passion fruit fence, filled up the reservoir, and it just wicked up from underneath into the pot, and the roots were able to start growing out from where I'd done a little damage. <laughs> and this is the result. I've never been able to grow such a vigorous, healthy passion fruit. There are a ton of fresh growth tips on this passion fruit. In fact, there's more than I'd probably like. I really need to learn how to trim this kind of a vine um, or whether you need to at all. Haven't even looked into it. But yeah, I've never had to get to that point before because as you can see, um, I've not been very successful with passion fruits before hydroponics. <laughs> This one has exceeded my expectations and I'll give you a quick look into the uh, auto fill bowl. And as you can see, the roots have started making their way into the reservoir, uh, but nowhere near as much as uh, those pickling cucumbers have. And this isn't a problem at all. Uh, I can foresee this growing extremely well for a long time to come. So. I'll let you know in updates how this goes, and hopefully we can get some delicious passion fruit off this plant. There you have it, guys. Another fantastic system. I'm really excited about this system. Uh, it's basically just a more versatile version of the rain gutter grow system, and I think more people will be able to utilize it, um, especially in small and inside spaces uh, to grow vegetables. So, happy hydroponicking. Consider subscribing and joining me on Patreon. Like the video if you liked it. And I'll see you next time on Who Chose.